Okay, hi everyone. It's seven o'clock, so we're going to make a start. So hopefully you can hear me and hopefully you can see my screen, okay, which is literally a spreadsheet screen with lots of nice colours on. So um, hopefully you can hear okay, you can see okay. We did the little test earlier, which seemed to go well. So hopefully we're all systems go. So I'm recording the session tonight. So for anyone that's not here, um, we can catch up at a later date. Hopefully Natasha will um, upload this session first thing in the morning. Um, so you can always watch it again if you missed anything or if you want a refresher. And obviously for anyone that can't attend tonight, it's going to be up there for you to watch in the morning. So, okay. So let me just click that button there. So I did mention it just now, but I'm just going to remind everyone. If you um, can see your little control panel on the right hand side, if you can just make sure your microphone is on mute. I have got the power to mute everyone here. Um, but if you could just make sure your microphone is switched off, it's not because I don't want to hear you. It's uh, just to sort of eliminate background noise, really. So if you could just make sure your mic is turned off, that would be really great. Thank you. So 31 people so far, so hopefully we're going to get a few more in the next few minutes. Um, we had about 80 register, which was incredible, really. So, uh, yeah, hopefully we'll get a few more as the evening goes on. But I will make a start now. So first of all, thank you very much for coming. It's the first in the masterclass sessions. And being as it's the first one, we're going to go absolutely right back to basics tonight. And we're going to just basically chat about accounting, the accounting equation and how accounting works particularly with regard to the balance sheet. Um, and we're going to sort of make a brief introduction into double entry. We're not going to go into uh, T accounts at all. And we're not going to go into which side we debit and which side we credit. Although that sort of stuff is near the beginning, I'm going to leave that until the next session and just sort of focus on the sort of bits before that, the real basics. I'm just checking the chat box. Eden says that... Uh, still hearing nothing. I'm hoping people can hear me. Um, but uh, the test seemed to go well just now. No one else is saying it, so I'm presuming you can all hear me. So uh, yes, Tony can hear. Great. Okay, so um, I will continue. So yeah, I've got the balance sheet on the screen now, and hopefully you can see all the different colours, which I'll explain why they are like that in a second. And I've got seven little descriptions on the right hand side, which I'm going to go through uh, shortly. Um, I've got a few people saying, can you make me the presenter? I'm not quite sure, really, because I'm not. I'm just going to be the presenter myself. I'm not going to make anyone else the presenter at the moment. I'm just going to be the presenter myself, and I'm just going to hold the session. And uh, we can obviously, it is completely interactive. So if you have got any questions at all, you're more than welcome to type them into the chat box. Now, depending on how many I get, I'll try and answer them. But uh, obviously, it's probably not going to be possible to answer every single question that I receive. But uh, if I don't answer any questions, what I will do is make sure that I cover them either later on this evening on the Facebook group or first thing in the morning when the clip is uh, uploaded to the group. So, yeah, if you have got any questions, please do feel free to type them into the chat box. But uh, I can't guarantee that I can answer them now. But I certainly will keep an eye on it as I work through the example tonight and I will try my best to answer what I can. So I'm going to go right back to the beginning, as I said, before T accounts, before which side we debit and which side we credit. And I'm going to start with the balance sheet. Now, the balance sheet is how I started when I first learned accounting. And um, it's no shame that I learned my accounting or a lot of it through uh, Frank Woods and his brilliant books. Frank Woods Business Accounting One was my Bible when I first started learning accounts, which was a very long time ago now. And it's his book that this example comes from. So uh, if it does look familiar to you, then you've probably seen it right at the very beginning of um, Frank Wood's business accounting book. So it is literally plucked straight from the book. It's that example that you'll see. Certainly in my edition, it's on page nine, it starts. Um, but I thought it would be a good thing to do, not only because I think it's a very good example. I think it's very, very detailed. Um, but also, if you have got the book, you can obviously refer to it as we're going along, or you can refer to it later on just to sort of double check the things we've been doing tonight, really. So, as I say, the first thing I learned when I learned accounting was the balance sheet. And I think it's uh, it's one of the sort of one of the most important things I think about accounting is the balance sheet. It's quite important to know how it works. Um, obviously, you've got the profit and loss account as well. But compared to the balance sheet, the profit and loss account is uh, relatively easy to understand and to work out. Um, obviously, the profit and loss account is literally sales minus expenses equals profit. And the balance sheet is obviously a little bit more complicated than that. 
but uh, so I think that's that's why it's a it's a good lesson to sort of learn the balance sheet first. I've had a few people saying they can't hear, and I've got a few people saying they had to leave and come back, and now it's worked. So um, if you can't hear me, you're not really going to hear what I'm about to say. But um, often a good thing to do is to sort of log out and log back in again. Normally clears the problems. But I'm pretty confident that everyone can hear me and everyone can see me, or most people can anyway. Um, so uh, we will continue. So we've got the balance sheet here, and I've got a few little words down here in different colours. We've got uh, the first thing I've got here is in red here, and it says capital equals assets minus liabilities. Now, assets, liabilities, and capital are obviously terms that uh, I guess we're all pretty much familiar with. Um, assets being what the business owns, liabilities being what the business owes. So assets, as in owns, O-W-N-S, and liabilities, O-W-E-S. And capital is also the same. I know a lot of people do get confused over the capital account and how it works, but the capital account is is basically money owed as well. It's money owed back to the proprietor. And I should add that in this case, this example that we're doing on the screen and the example we're going to work through tonight is for a sole trader. Obviously, limited company accounts, limited company balance sheets are a little bit different, um, but we're not going to go into that tonight. We're going to keep it nice and easy and... Uh, Assume we're working with a sole trader. So B. Blake is a sole trader. So, so B. Blake's capital, the capital in the balance sheet, is owed back to him, owed back to the proprietor. So it's uh, it's effectively another liability, although it is classed as capital. So as you can see in red there, I've got capital equals assets minus liabilities. Now, I've got two figures in red here. They're both zeros at the moment because we haven't sort of started working out the, the uh, example that I've got in front of us here. But uh, with a balance sheet, there's always two parts to it. And just like accountancy, every debit entry has a credit entry. There's two sides to every single entry in accounts. So the balance sheet should always balance. So this is the top half of the balance sheet here. And the capital account is the bottom half. So I'll just go into that into a bit more detail. The top half of the balance sheet normally contains assets. So it can be fixed assets or current assets. And... Uh, then we've got current liability, so the sort of second half, the second third, I guess, of the balance sheet is current liabilities. And that gives us a figure here. And then the last part of the balance sheet, which is the other half of the balance sheet, so it's the, the, the final third of the balance sheet, although it's the second half, if that makes sense. And that's the capital account. So assets minus liabilities will come to that figure there, which I'm put, moving my mouse across there. And the capital account is there. So those two figures, the two figures in red, should always equal. Because we've got the equation here, capital, which is there, equals assets minus liabilities, equals assets minus liabilities. Obviously, this is a very simplified balance sheet. Um, they do get more complicated as we, as we either work further through the book or we sort of start to use balance sheets in real life. They're a lot more complicated than this. But it's really trying to get the sort of message across of basically how the balance sheet works, how the accounting equation works. So we're just trying to really keep it as simple as we can. So there are there's two ways of saying it. That's the first way of saying it is capital equals assets minus liabilities. But a lot of people prefer to use this term, which is assets equals capital plus liabilities, which is obviously exactly the same equation. It's just expressed in a different way. And people do tend to prefer one or the other. I myself prefer this one here, capital equals assets minus liabilities, because the capital account is always separate on the balance sheet. It's the second half of the balance sheet, and it always equals the top half of the balance sheet, which is assets minus liabilities. So I must admit, I do prefer that method of describing it, but this is very popular too. Assets equals capital plus liabilities, which is obviously also true. The assets that the business has obtained are always equal to the liabilities and the capital. So it's obviously exactly the same equation, but it's it's how you want to express it, whichever is easier for you to understand. But obviously they both mean exactly the same thing. So yet another way of saying it, maybe a more simplified way of saying it, um, is this green and the orange box down at the bottom here. Now, it's all about resources. The business has resources, and the resources the business business has are classed as assets. So resources is what they are. So what the resources are, that means. So on a balance sheet, they're assets. So you'll see I've colored that green, that statement, and I've also colored these boxes green. So resources, what they are, which is assets, are these items here. 
So in this example, I've got a shop. So the, the proprietor is going to buy a shop, which you'll see in the example soon. Um, he's got inventory, he's got accounts receivable, and he's got cash at bank. So he holds all those in the business. So they are classed as assets. So they are the resources that he holds in the business. And the second, second sort of text I've got here in the orange box is resources who supplied them. So the accounting equation is the resources what they are, and the other half of it is the resources who supplied them. And that's the two halves of the balance sheet that we need to talk about. So the resources what they are, they're in green there, and the resources who supplied them. Now who supplied the resources can be a mixture of people. Um, the proprietor is obviously going to supply some of the resources, as we'll see in the example in a second. The capital account is a resource supplied by the owner. And the account payable is a resource supplied by a supplier, for example. So hopefully that makes sense. Everything in green is what the business owns. So the business has value of these items here. And they've been supplied by creditors accounts payables and the proprietor which is the capital account so hopefully that makes sense and you'll see that hopefully goes some way to explaining why the balance sheet always balances because the assets that you have obviously have to equal how they were brought into the business so hopefully that kind of makes sense so all four obviously all four of these uh, are quite handy to know as I say, the first two here, it's entirely your decision which one you want, or you may even have another way of, of looking at it. But I certainly prefer this explanation, capital equals assets minus liabilities, because I always think to myself, the second half of the balance sheet, which is this part, is the capital. And that has to equal the top half of the balance sheet, which is the assets minus the liabilities. So to my mind, that one in red is the most logical explanation. But it's quite often preferred to use this explanation as well. But hopefully those two at the bottom there, together with the colors on the different assets and liabilities do make sense to you. So you have to remember that the business, the business is all about resources. The whole of the business is resources. And there's two types of resource in the, in the balance sheet. That's what they are and who supplied them. And that's really all we need to know. That's the double entry effectively. That's one side of the double entry and that's the other side of the double entry. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to slowly work through these seven items here, um, which are transactions that have happened in B. Blake's business. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to explain each one very slowly and I'm going to show you how each one affects the balance sheet. So as I said earlier, for this purpose, I'm not going to get involved in the profit and loss account at all. So all these seven transactions on here all affect only balance sheet accounts. So obviously in the real world, that's not very likely. Um, they're going to affect profit and loss account as well. But I didn't want to make this example too complicated. And it's not really a full blown example of double entry. It's basically just to get you used to how the balance sheet works and sort of get you to sort of understand how assets, liabilities and capital work. Because for me, as I said earlier, that was the sort of foundation in accountancy for me. I didn't move on to T accounts and debiting and crediting until after I'd sort of mastered and understood this part, really. So after we finish tonight, if you can hopefully you know, understand what I've done and it makes sense to you, then hopefully on the next session when we do T accounts and debits and credits, they will make a lot more sense and will be a lot more logical. I mean, what I intend to do on the next session is to keep these transactions here. And what I'll do is have a spreadsheet in front of me just like tonight, but I will do T accounts for all of these transactions. So I will debit and credit each side as we go through the questions. But for now, I'm kind of doing a simplified version of that by showing you the direct changes that affect the balance sheet. So hopefully it does make sense to you. And hopefully this is a this is quite a logical and helpful way of working through it. And as I said, I do think it helps uh, students to understand the balance sheet in full, to understand the accounting equation, to understand how it all works before moving on to T accounts and debits and credits. So just keep an eye on the time. I'm aiming to finish this probably about quarter to eight. So we've got sort of time for questions if we if we have any. So I've got half an hour, so that should give me a good time to move, to work through these questions very, very slowly and to explain fully how they all work and how they affect the balance sheet. So for the moment, 
don't worry about which side we debit, which side we credit. Don't worry about the T account and don't worry about the profit and loss account. As I say, all these transactions affect only balance sheet accounts. And I've done that because I want to show you how the balance sheet works and to sort of try and help you to understand the balance sheet before moving on to debiting and crediting, ac crediting accounts next session. So I'm just going to have a sip of water before my throat goes completely dry. So the first transaction is pretty much standard, I guess, in any business, is the introduction of capital by the owner. So B. Blake is just about to start his business. So the first thing he's going to do is introduce capital into his business. So capital is a resource, as you'll see down here. It's a resource under who supplied them. The owner supplied them in this case, so it's capital. If it was anyone else but the owner supplying the resource, then it would be under liabilities. For now, it's the owner supplying the resource to the business, so it's classed as capital. So the first transaction says B. Blake started in business and deposited £60,000 into a bank account open specially for the business. So it's his first transaction of his business. He's decided to open his business on this particular day and he's gone down to the bank with 60000 Hopefully he didn't take it in cash and he's opened a bank account with it. So we need to look at the two transactions because every single transaction on here has two sides to it. But as I say, I'm not going to worry too much about debiting and crediting at the moment. But I'm just going to show you that each of these items on here, each of these seven items, I will show you the two transactions that take place in the balance sheet. So we'll go back to B. Blake starting in business, depositing £60,000 into a bank account. So we've got an asset here called Cash at Bank. So that's a resource what they are. It's an asset. And just before I do this, I'm going to give you one more little tip here. Now, you'll probably notice that I'm working on numbers because I have a Mac. Um, but this tip I'm about to show you works perfectly in Excel as well. And it's a really good thing to learn. I learned it years ago when I was starting spreadsheets. And you may well know this, but it's very, very handy. Rather than just typing numbers into a cell, it really does help if you want to know how you got to the figures on screen is to type the equals symbol before you start. If I was just to type 60,000 into there, that would be absolutely fine. But a lot of these transactions that I'm going to do, I'm going to use the same cell. So rather than me work it out manually with a calculator, I'm going to use the equals button before I type any numbers in. And that way we can add on to the formula as we go along. I hope that makes sense, but it's just worthwhile remembering. It's kind of a, a process, a system that I, that I adopted and I've never stopped using it since I started using spreadsheets. Whenever I type a number into a cell, even if it's a single number, I always type equals first. So the cash at bank, I've typed equals, so it's 60, 0, 0, 0. OK, so we have cash at bank, 60,000 pounds. Now, obviously, we need to look at the other side of that entry. Now, the other side of that entry is B. Blake depositing 60,000 pounds. So that's come from his capital account. So that's where we need to put it. So equals 60,000. OK. So all the time looking at our balance sheet, the most important thing is that these two figures in red are exactly the same. All the time they are, we know our figures balance. And all the time they are, it will follow this formula here of capital equals assets minus liabilities. So again, the cash at bank is in green, it's an asset. The capital is in orange, 60,000, because it's been supplied to the business by the owner. So hopefully that makes sense. So we'll look at number two now. So this is the purchase of an asset by check. So Mr. Blake, he's got his £60,000 in the bank account and he's decided he wants to buy a shop, a small shop for £32,000 paying by check. So these two transactions here, oops, let me to do that. These two transactions here are both going to affect asset accounts because we're buying a small shop for £32,000. So we're gaining the asset of a shop so that's going to go in there. But at the same time, we're decreasing the asset of cash at bank. So although it's not going to affect the bottom half of the balance sheet, the, the figures are still going to balance, as we'll see in a second. So he buys a small shop for £32,000. So we've got shop code here. So we're going to click on that cell. And I'm going to say equals £32,000 in there like that. But obviously, it doesn't balance at the moment because that's only one side of the entry. He's paid by check. 
So we've got our cash at bank figure here, which is also an asset. Now, this is the beauty of typing equals. All I need to do is click into that cell and I type minus because we're taking off 32,000 pounds. We're spending it out the bank, so it needs to minus it off the 60. Okay, so the effect of that second transaction, it leaves us with a 32,000 pound shop asset on the balance sheet, but it also decreases our cash at bank, so we now have 28,000 in the bank because we had 60, but we spent 32. Now, as I said, it doesn't affect the bottom half of the balance sheet, so we still balance perfectly. So that's number two. So we're going to move on to number three, the purchase of an asset and the incurring of a liability. So this is going to affect an asset account and a liability account. It's going to affect an asset account, which is going to be in green, and it's going to affect a liability account, which is going to be in orange. So Blake buys some goods. Now, normally with goods, we would assume it's goods for resale, but we're not in this case. We've got a, a stock code, an inventory item on the balance sheet, and that's what we're going to use for this purpose, just to make it a bit clearer. So Blake buys some goods, so we'll call it stock in there, for £7,000 from someone called D Smith, and agrees to pay for them sometime within the next two weeks. So he's basically buying goods, £7,000 worth of goods on credit. So we've got the code inventory here, so we're going to say equals 7000 There we go. So the asset of inventory has now been increased by 7,000. So but Mr. Blake agrees to pay Mr. Smith sometime in the next two weeks. So he's not going to pay for it straight away. So it's not going to come out the cash at bank because it's a creditor. It's a resource and a liability. So the, just briefly going back to this here, resources, what they are and who supplied them. What they are in this case is 7,000 pounds worth of inventory. They were supplied by D Smith, so therefore that this is a liability to Mr. Smith. So we're going to look in accounts payable here. Now the way my spreadsheet works is it takes off, well, the way any balance sheet works is it takes off liabilities from assets. So in this case, I'm still going to say equals, but I'm going to put a minus figure in front of it because it's a minus figure, and I'm going to say 7,000. Okay, so, We've now got a shop for £32,000 as an asset. We've got £7,000 worth of inventory. We've got £28,000 in the bank. So we've got £67,000 worth of assets, less a creditor owed of £7,000. So our net figure comes out at 60. Our capital account hasn't changed, so that stays at 60. So our balance sheet still balances. So. If I just go back briefly down to these two again, just to prove that these are still working, capital equals assets min minus liabilities, that obviously still works. The capital is 60, assets are 67, minus liabilities, which are seven, equals 60. So that works perfectly. And the same here, assets equals capital plus liabilities. So the assets are 67, the capital is 60, and a creditor of seven supplied them. So that equals 67. So whichever way we look at it, it balances perfectly. And hopefully you can understand the logic in that as well. So that's number three. So we're now going to look at number four, which is sale of an asset on credit. So it's not ordinary sales that you'd find in the profit and loss account for simplicity, because we're just looking at the balance sheet. So and we're not obviously looking at depreciation or anything like that. It's a very, very simplified example. So goods which cost £600 were sold to Jay Brown for the same amount, the money to be paid later. So our inventory, inventory sorry, is going to decrease by £7,000. Sorry, it's got just one other thing in the chat box there. Decreased by £600. And it's also going to affect the accounts receivable or the debtor's account, which is going to increase by £600. So the net effect is going to be nothing, obviously. So we'll break that down. Goods which cost £600 were sold to Jay Brown for the same amount. So our inventory figure is now going to decrease by £600. So I'm going to click on inventory and I'm going to, because I've got the equals in from earlier, I can carry on the formula. So if I say minus 600, but we're selling them to Jay Brown. He's not paid us instantly or the money would have gone in the bank account. The money's going to be paid a little bit later on. 
So we're going to put the 600 pound owed. He's a debtor, he's an account receivable. So he goes in here, equals 600 pounds. Okay, so we'll go back to our rule again. The balance sheet still balances. The resources, what they are, are in green for 67. The resources who supplied them, capital plus liabilities, is 60 plus seven, so that's 67 as well. So our balance sheet still balances, the accounting equation still works, everything's still perfect. So our next item is sale of an asset for immediate payment. So number five is good which cost goods which cost 400 pounds was sold to D daily for the same amount, daily paid for them immediately by check. So this is not a debtor because we're not giving the person credit. He's paid for them straight away. So we're going to do the following. So goods which cost 400 pounds were sold for the same amount. So we go to our inventory, they've been sold. So we're gonna take off, we're gonna do minus 400, like that. And he's paid for them, he or she, D Daly, paid for them immediately by check. So that means the money's going straight into the bank account. So if I click on that, and as you can see, my previous formulas are still in there. So you can see how handy that is if you want to trace how you've got to the amount in a particular cell. Rather than working this out manually on a calculator, you can actually do the formula as you go along. So it kind of shows all your workings, I guess, is the way to put it. So we're going to put plus 400 pound because Daly's immediately paid it. Okay, so that changes our figures as so. One second, while I just have a quick look at something. That's perfect, okay. So, our account still balance. The balance sheet still balances, everything still works. With the balance sheet still balanced at 60,000 pounds. Resources, what they are, comes, still comes to 67. And resources, who supplied them, supplied by capital of 60 and supplied by creditors of seven. So that comes to 67 as well. So we're still balancing perfectly. We've shown that every single transaction on here has got two entries to it and the balance sheet still balances because of that. Obviously, if we'd had transactions with only one entry, the balance sheet is not gonna balance and therefore that's the whole point of double entry. So as I said, just let me pause for a minute on these, on these uh, transactions here. I said this was an introduction to double entry, so apologies if you if you um, were expecting T accounts or anything like that, but I think this is important to understand this and how it works before we move on to T accounts. So Karen says, can I do number five again? I got, she got lost. No problem at all, Karen. I'll just explain number five again then. So goods which cost £400 were sold to D Daily. So as I said, for this purpose, don't think of goods as goods for resale. We're just thinking of an, of the inventory here because these are the only codes that we're using. So because the goods were sold, I decreased the inventory by 400 pounds. And because they were paid for immediately by check, I increased the bank by 400 pounds as well. So that was the two sides of the transaction. So the two codes it's affected are inventory and cash at bank. Now I can actually see down the bottom of the screen here, I've, I've said that you can see the formula as you go along and certainly with numbers on a Mac, you can do that. I'm pretty sure it's the same as Excel as well. But if you look right at the very bottom of the screen here, you can actually see your formula, which is a massive advantage of using the equal sign before you start any formula because it always shows your workings here. It's re I know it's a really small tip and you may well be using it. Thank you, Nicola, for Excel as a bar along the top. Absolutely, I think you're absolutely right. Absolutely right. But I just think, although it's a small tip and many of you may, may do it, um, when I was taught it when I first ever used spreadsheets, it's it's really, really handy and I have always used it since. Um, I guess it's particularly handy if you're doing something like a manual bookkeeping job on Excel where you're just adding receipts up on Excel. <laughs> if you, you know, if you, a lot of people, what they do, I've seen them do it, they'll work them all out on a calculator, add them all up and then type that figure into Excel. Well, what I'm suggesting is you put the equal sign first and then you do the calculation on your keyboard. So when you press enter on your Mac or on your PC, then you can see that formula. And it's also easy to identify, you know, if any receipts stand out that might be wrong or if you've missed any, you know, because you can see the calculation, um, it just becomes a lot clearer. Yeah, yeah. A, a few of you have sort of appreciated that tip. And it is only a small tip, as I say, but it's a very, very, very valuable tip. So always use equals when you're typing a formula, always. Right, we will move on. We're on half past seven, so we've still got plenty of time. So it's time for some more water. 
and we're going to move on to number six. So number six is the payment of a liability. So we've got a liability there, so I'm guessing that account's going to be used, and we're going to pay a liability, so I'm guessing the bank's going to be used as well. So Mr. Blake, um, he pays a cheque for £3,000 to Mr. Smith in part payment of the amount owing. So paying a cheque for £3,000. So we're spending out £3,000. So if we, we see our formula down there, if we click on that, we're getting rid of £3,000. So we're going to say minus 3000 So our cash at bank is now reduced. Now, pretty obvious, but I will say it. As I've only done one side of the transaction, you'll see the balance sheet doesn't balance. So I guess that's the whole point of double entry. We must do our two entries for the accounts to balance. So we've paid a liability. So the liabilities there are currently minus 7,000. Now, naturally, if I was to minus this figure, it would increase the liability, which we don't want to do. We want to decrease the liability. So by to decrease the liability, we're going to put a plus in there, and we're going to say 3,000. OK, so as you can see, our liability was 7,000 pounds outstanding, and now it's gone down to 4,000 pounds. But you will, have, you will see that everything still works. Our balance sheet still balances. We've still got the resources, what they are, which now comes to £64,000, as you'll see. So the assets we've got, the shop, the inventory, the accounts receivable and the cash, all added together comes to £64,000, which is the resources, what they are. And who supplied them? They were supplied by Mr. Blake for 60000 and they were supplied by a creditor, which was Mr. Smith, for 4000 which comes to 64. So whichever way you look at the balance sheet, it works. Whichever formula you choose to work by, it still works. So we're going to move on to number seven. I'm sailing through these now. So we've got Jay Brown, who owed Blake 600 makes a part payment of £200 by cheque. So Jay Brown who owed Blake £600, and we can see in the balance sheet we've got an accounts receivable of £600. So that's the debt owed to us, owed to Mr Blake, £600. So Mr Brown has made a part payment of £200 by cheque. So these two transactions are going only to affect the asset accounts. We've got an accounts receivable of £600, but £200 of it has now been paid. So we're going to say minus £200. So obviously, logically, our accounts receivable are now 400. We had a debt of 600 pound on our balance sheet. That's now been reduced by 200 pounds because we've had a payment. So the payment has gone into our bank account. We'll be pleased to know. So we're going to open that up. There's our formula. We're going to say plus 200. So we've now got 25,600 in our bank account. So that's all the transactions now completed. I'm just going to double check that it's the same as the answer in the book, which is always a good idea. And it is. It's identical. That's good. So we now look at our final balance sheet after those seven transactions. And first of all, if we can just we'll just run through everything here once more, just so that you can understand it. Our first our first statement here, if you like, is capital equals assets minus liabilities. And as I said to you before, just to refresh you, the reason I did this in red is because it represents the two totals on each half of the balance sheet. So whenever you see a balance sheet in real, real life, for example, obviously it will always balance. And it's these two figures that are important. It's the assets minus liabilities gives you one figure and the capital gives you the other figure. And they should all and they will they will always balance or they should do anyway. And that is why we have to remember that. But as I say, I have put that one in there. Just a different way of saying it because a lot of people prefer that way of, of thinking about it. But to me, that's just slightly out of sync with how the balance sheet works. But if people use that to understand it, that's absolutely fine. And that one represents assets. So it's 64 in this case equals capital plus liabilities. So capital is £60,000 that was supplied by the owner and the £4,000 that was supplied by a creditor. So it still obviously works. Mute again, there we go. And just on looking at our sort of two statements at the bottom as well, we've still got the resources, what they are, which is assets. So our assets and our balance sheet, we own a shop. We owe inventory worth £6,000. We have a debtor, which is obviously an asset because it's owed to the business, which is £400. And we have the cash at bank, which is always an asset. If it's a plus, 
Obviously, if you've got a bank overdraft, for example, that's a liability. I might talk about that a bit more in a second because that's an area where a lot of people do trip up. But if you've got cash at the bank, which is a positive amount, if you've got physical money in the bank, then it's going to be an asset. Yes, I've seen a few people um, sort of trip up on that. They have shown on the balance sheet, if, for example, there's a bank overdraft, they've shown it as a minus asset, which is not correct. If it's a bank overdraft, then it becomes a liability. It becomes a liability because it, the bank are basically a, a creditor. If you're in overdraft, then the business owes that money to the bank. So it's a liability. So all the time you've got money in the bank, it's your money. It's an asset. All the time you've got an overdraft, that's not your money. That's money you owe to the bank. So they become a creditor. They become an account payable. So it's shown in the liability section of the balance sheet. So that's a little tip as well. Um, quite often people do sort of trip up on that one as well. So we've looked at what's, what the assets are, which is in green. So they come to £64,000. So just to recap, we've got the shop, the inventory, the debtor, and the cash at bank. It comes to £64,000. And then if we remember the other half, if you like, in orange is the resources who supplied them. Now, who supplied them could be a combination of the owner and our creditors, which it is here. The owner supplies £60,000. You'll see that hasn't changed at all. And... £4,000 was supplied by a creditor. So 60 plus 4 comes to 64, and that's the value of our assets. So hopefully that makes sense. So sort of a few other things to say about balance sheets as well. As I say, the figures in red are the figures we, that are sort of really important. When um, when you look at Companies House, for example, if you look at accounts on Companies House, um, you'll, you'll always see a balancing figure of the balance sheet. And this is the figure that... Um, sort of banks will look at or lenders will look at as how much the company is worth. Um, so that's why I've put it in red, really. I've put it in red because it's quite uh, important that uh, it follows this equation. You know, it's capital equals assets minus liabilities. Um, but it's also because it's uh, sort of two of the most key figures of the balance sheet. Um, and obviously, it should always be the same figure. It always in published accounts, it's always going to be the same figure. Um, but when we do our when we do our exercises, when we prepare accounts for our clients, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, we have to make sure that the balance sheet always does balance. Now, what we're going to do now, hopefully, that's been useful. Hopefully, I've explained that in a way that uh, is understandable. Hopefully, it's helped. So, what we're going to do in the next session is we're going to work through this example again. But we're going to work through it using T-accounts. Now, T-accounts, I think, are fantastic. I love T-accounts. Um, I think they're the best, the best way of understanding double entry, to be honest. And uh, so what we're going to do next on the next session is we're going to have open up T-accounts for all these accounts that we've just gone through. And we're going to work through the example again really slowly. But this time we're going to use the T-accounts. And I'm going to show you which side you debit, which side, which side you credit. Um, Ultimately, what we're going to be doing on this masterclass is we're going to be working through sort of this whole example for a while because there's lots of sort of stages to double entry. And I don't want to I don't want to bombard you with stuff. You know, this masterclass is about taking it as slowly as possible. I've just seen your Holly B. I've just seen your question. I'll come back to you in one second. So, um, yeah, I'm going to work through this example as slowly as I can over the next sort of few fortnights. We're going to do fortnightly sessions here. I will tell you the next date. I won't tell you the next date because my diary is in my other room. But we'll put the date of the next session on the Facebook group when we when we upload this clip. Um, but the next session, as I say, we'll deal with T accounts. And then we're also going to deal with after the following session, we're going to deal with how we balance the accounts off. I know that is a real, real struggle for some people, how you balance accounts off. Balance is carried down and balance is brought down. They cause so much confusion. Um, and it is quite it's quite fiddly to get to get uh, to get your head round. You know, debiting and credit accounts is difficult enough anyway if you don't understand it. But then to be asked to balance them as well is uh, brilliant. Thank you, Tony. Sorry to say, interrupt my own stride there, but Tony says the next session's on the second of February. So thanks for that. Um, yeah, we will confirm that as I say when we when we upload this clip tomorrow morning. But the next session will purely be setting up all the T accounts using debits and credits for all the examples we've just gone through. And then the following session will be will be balancing off accounts. And as I say, the balancing off accounts is the bit that people do struggle with. So I've decided not to do the balancing off accounts for um, 
for next week. I don't want to, I don't want to do the, you know, put all the entries into the T accounts and balance them off on the same session. It's going to be far too, far too much for one session. And the whole idea of this masterclass was to take things very, very, very slowly and just to try and explain things in a way that certainly I, how I learned them and, uh, how I think it can help you guys as well. So yeah, that's what that's what next week's next fortnight's session will be. Two weeks time, we'll be doing a session on uh, on on the T account, but but using this example. So just before I finish, I'm going to just go back through the questions box for one second. So, oh, so Tony says when is the next session? So hopefully we've we've sorted that. Now Holly B says to me. Can you remind me whereabouts you said this was in the Frank Wood book? Right, so the Frank Wood book that I'm using, it's my sort of trusty, my trusty book that I've had for a long time. Frank Wood's Business Accounting One. It's the 11th edition, it's called. And let me just turn back to where I started. Right, so on page nine, the item 1.6, it says the balance sheet and the effects of business transactions. So that whole example that I've just done through you, with, with you is is detailed in on those pages there so i've just gone through each one as i say as slowly as i can and hopefully it's uh it's explained it explained it well for you so i'm um, finished just before quarter to eight so i'm going to be here now until eight o'clock if anyone has any questions at all on what i've done tonight how i've done it and what i think i might do if it's helpful to you guys what i might do is save a copy of this um, spreadsheet I've just done in Excel format and I'll upload it onto the group if that will be helpful and then you'll see all the questions that we work through and then you'll see how I've got to each figure by looking at the formula boxes so um, if you want me to upload it in fact I will <laughs> hopefully you'll find it helpful I will make sure I upload it onto the Facebook group as well just so that you guys can sort of see what I've done tonight it's got all the sort of formulas that I've done on there all the statements that I've gone through are on there so hopefully it will be helpful so it's going to be, I'm going to be here for about 15 minutes or so. I'm going to stop the recording now. So we've got about around about a 40 to 45 minute recording, which we will upload onto the Facebook group in the morning. But in the meantime, hopefully the first masterclass has been helpful for you. Um, I believe this has been a good, a good way to start before we tackle T accounts. I believe a good grasp of a balance sheet and a good grasp of assets, liabilities and capital is a kind of solid foundation for starting to learn about T accounts which is what we're going to do next next time round. So thank you all very much for coming. Hopefully it's been useful for you. I'm going to stop the recording now and say thank you and see you all soon. Thanks very much.